What's up guys, Jake here, and today I'm gonna be sharing with you how we collect eggs here at Josh's Frogs. Now, fortunately, all you really need to start breeding dart frogs is a male and a female adult. Once you have those, most dart frogs are fairly easy to breed. They don't really require any additional input. All they really need is a suitable egg laying spot. So you're probably wondering, what's a suitable egg laying spot? Well, about 90% of our dart frogs here at Josh's Frogs will lay in just a simple cocoa hut with a petri dish underneath. It's uh, tried and true, it's classic, but it works really well. Uh, this is gonna be mainly for things like tinctorius, leucamellas, erratus, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we do when we start collecting the eggs. When you're dealing with live animals, especially amphibians, gloves are usually a good idea. So you can see this guy in here. Excuse me. Underneath this egg hut, as you can see here, there are three eggs. Two of them are infertile, that'll happen sometimes, but you see that one right there is uh, perfectly good. Then the next step is to, we take a little eight ounce cup, replace the Petri dish and then put the dish back in. And that's, it's really that simple. For most of our species, for pretty much all of our dendrobateids, that's as, really as much as you have to do. Uh, and then, just to make sure the eggs don't desiccate, we take a little tadpole tea, which is just reverse osmosis water with, uh, soaked with Indian almond leaves. And we just add a little bit, just so the eggs are like, probably halfway covered with the water. And then just close it up so they don't dry out. And then, we deal with a ton of eggs here at Josh's Frog, so it's always a good idea to write the species. We have ours labeled by tank. This is in Azurius, so I'm gonna write AZ, and then 320 is the tank name, and then I'm gonna write how many eggs there are, and I will write the date as well. And if these are your first eggs you're collecting, you can go ahead and write like a smiley face as well. That's, that totally works. And that'll, that'll cover a ton of different species, like I said, Tinctorius, Leucamellas, uh, Truncatus, Aratus things like that, but if you're dealing with something like a thumbnail, they're gonna be a little bit different, so we're just gonna go ahead and switch tanks real quick and we'll get to that. Okay, so now we have our thumbnail tank. These are the species in the genus Renitomea. Now, some of them will lay in cocoa huts with petri dishes, but a lot of the times they'll prefer something like these uh, film canisters, and you can experiment with different species, which how they like them oriented. I found that with this species, this is uh, Renitomea imitator intermedius, that uh, film canisters oriented vertically and horizontally facing each other work by far the best, but frogs are different. They're like people, so you can experiment and see which uh, your frogs like the best. But uh, when we're looking for eggs in here, uh, like I said, they'll mainly be in film canisters, but these guys are pretty variable with where they like to lay eggs, so it's always good to check like on the glass, near the lip of the tank, uh, on plants, on leaves, things like that. These can sometimes take a little bit longer to find, so let's go ahead and take a look. And seeing in these film canisters can be a little bit tricky, so I have a flashlight. Let's turn that down so we don't burn their cornea. And as you can see in here, these are some intermediate eggs. Uh, imitator eggs will generally be white. Uh, as we saw with the Azurius, uh, some of those eggs were white. These should probably be fine, so don't throw them away if they don't look normal. But uh, yeah, so once we have those, be careful to close the lid. These guys are really small and they're very fast, so they can jump out, so just be careful of that. The best way, in my opinion, to get the eggs out of the film canister is by using a little tool like this. I don't really know exactly what you would call this. I just call it a scraper, but um, something like maybe like a, a old credit card, if you like cut the corner off, would be a suitable replacement. And then just super gently, you'll just want to coax the eggs out without puncturing them. that. Once you have those taken care of, you can go ahead and put your film canister back. And like I said, they'll lay eggs in tons of different places. Just because you can't find them in the film canisters doesn't mean they're not laying. Uh, they could be pretty much anywhere with thumbnails. It, it, they could be anywhere. And then uh, again, we're just going to take some of our tadpole tea, fill it up just a little bit just so they don't dry out. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and label this. This is a uh, Renitimea Imitator Intermedius, or Inter, and it's the fourth tank, so we'll go. There's three of them, and then today's date. If you only have like one or two tanks, this is probably not gonna be necessary, but we deal with tons and tons of eggs, so it's good not to mix them up. All right, and the last thing that we do with eggs before we put them away is we clean them. So if you can see in here, we showed you earlier, there's a couple of those, um, those bad eggs, those infertile ones, and then you've got all this, all this gunk here. Uh, getting rid of that stuff will just make sure that mold doesn't grow. Uh, any like organic matter like poop or substrate or plants will get in there and they will make uh, the eggs get moldy and that's a pretty easy way to kill your eggs. So you just wanna very gently just sort of get all of this, all this extra stuff out. And we use turkey basters for this. You can do something like that. If your eggs are pretty firmly stuck to there, as you see, they, they're sliding around, so I wouldn't be able to do that, but you can take your RO water and just kind of tilt it and then get all that stuff out like that. If there's some little pieces right around the egg and you're not sure you can get them out, uh, it's, it's fine to leave those. It's obviously better to leave a little bit of debris than to puncture the egg. And then once we have our good egg in here, we do the same thing, except this time we're using tadpole tea uh, with diluted methylene blue. We're doing the same thing, filling it up halfway, and then, and then we just put them away. And your eggs will take anywhere from one to two weeks to hatch. Uh, we repeat this process of cleaning three times a week. And uh, yeah, that's how we collect eggs here at Josh's Frogs. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all later. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.